Well, good morning. Uh, I was quite impressed with the agenda this morning, as a matter of fact. I noticed you have eight speakers before lunch, uh, so that's pretty good. So hopefully I remember when I was in college uh, and the, uh, we, you know, classes were going on, you just experienced the same thing. And when I went to Naval Academy, we had occasionally we would have a pilot or a submarine officer or a Marine would be teaching the particular class. And we would always shoot for sea stories. We always wanted that pilot to, you know, tell us stories about what's really going on out there. So I thought I'd start off this morning with a story to pique your interest, tell you a little bit about why I'm so impressed with this group we have before us, and then maybe finish off with another story. Uh, last February, uh, you may recall, if you've been reading the papers at all, there, were, there was a U.S. satellite uh, that was falling through space, in fact, getting ready to enter an orbit. It was 5,000 pounds, but on the satellite, there was a giant tank of hydrazine, and hydrazine was a fuel, and there was real concern that if that satellite wouldn't completely burn up, it was the size of a school bus, in essence, tumbling through space, traveling at tremendous speeds. And uh, as that satellite was flying through space, uh, we recognized, we, the U.S. government, recognized we had a problem there, and we certainly uh, couldn't exactly predict where it was going to land, nor certainly could predict what was going to happen with that particular hydrazine tank, which is a real cause of concern. So uh, the U.S. government marshaled all its resources, the Missile Defense Agency, the U.S. Navy, they got together and they said, well, we've got our Aegis platform out there and uh, we're going to put to use all of that technology, uh, all of those great things the nation has invested over many years to take care of this national problem. It wasn't a problem we had anticipated, uh, but we said, hey, let's put this to use and see what we can do. And sure enough, uh, I believe it was in the very end of February, around the 20th or so, uh, we, the U.S. Navy, uh, through the help of other government agencies, shot this satellite out of the sky. And, uh, and it's akin to shooting a bullet with a bullet. And, and indeed, that was done and was successful. And it was successful in large part because of the investments the nation made in the technology the ships, the missile technology, all the computational power and energy that went into trying to figure out exactly what azimuth, what speeds, and how to, how to exactly shoot that bullet with a bullet. It's a tremendous problem. Uh, but in fact, what was really remarkable was the fact, not just this equipment, but the people in that, those organizations that worked together to solve this very complex problem, integrating all of these disciplines. And so I really want to talk to you today about the people and uh, the people in our organizations, you, in fact, are those people. In fact, you're the folks that are going to be coming in. And what I really enjoy about the work that I do is interacting with the scientists, the engineers, the technicians, uh, uh, everybody, all classes of folks, even folks that aren't scientists, certainly, because this organization doesn't work without good management and administration, procurement, the whole line of work. But it's a tremendous legacy uh, that, that we have before us in people uh, in this program. And what I want to give you the sense that particularly in my area of expertise, which is nuclear security, I was running the National Nuclear Security Administration, this is a tremendous time in the National Nuclear Security Administration. Just last week, President Obama met with his counterpart in Russia, and they laid out a very broad strategic framework for putting together a 21st century global security framework dealing with things, all things nuclear. Because the president understands that one bomb in a terrorist's hands changes everything. Just like 9-11 changed a lot for us in this country and around the world, we recognize that particularly as civil nuclear starts to grow, that as things have changed over the last number of years and how we protect materials and technology, that we have a big job ahead of us in making the world safer from nuclear dangers. So in fact, that's one of the main focuses, foci of my job, is to pull together and marshal the resources that we have in this country to address this problem, not just here domestically, but frank, frankly around the world. And from day one, in, since the Manhattan Project, uh, from the development of that very first computer, the ENIAC 
And today's, as, as Pat talked about earlier, with the TerraScale and, in fact, Petascale machines that are coming forward and are thinking about exascale platforms uh, downstream, how do we, because we, how do we pull all of this stuff together? It's not just about going to IBM or going to some other supercomputer manufacturer and saying, give me the fastest computer. Uh, you have to have the codes, you have to have the experiments to do the V and V, you have to bring all of these things together. So, uh, you know, I'm tremendously proud of the organization that we have. I'm really proud of all of you for coming into this program and pulling all of this together. Nuclear security is the focus, as I mentioned earlier. National Nuclear Security Administration. And it's not just about nuclear weapons. People think of this organization as a nuclear weapons organization. In fact, while that is true, nuclear weapons are a foundational piece of what we do, the main focus, one of the other foci of the program is this uh, nonproliferation work that we have. In essence, making sure that we have the best people working on our most complex problems. Nuclear forensics, for example, and our ability to track nuclear material around the world. In essence, kind of fingerprint nuclear material, so if there is, ever is an issue, whether it's a radiological dirty device or an improvised nuclear device, that we know exactly where that material came from by looking at the isotopes, by looking at or being able to take out various ratios of the isotopes, we can track that material back to its origin point. And in effect, use that information and make sure the word gets out there as a deterrent to make sure that people understand that if something goes off, we know where that material came from. So that's nuclear forensics. 